participate in. Lord, I pray for the seniors. I pray for the seniors, citizens. I'm a senior myself. And I pray for the seniors, to God, that we don't give up in this last hour, to God. In this last hour, it's a time for us to keep holding on and to keep the faith. Only those who endure unto the end will be saved. Bless us, Lord. Give us enduring power. Give us enduring power, dear God. Look on those who are sick. We have many who are sick with conditions, dear God. But Lord, I pray that they stay encouraged. I pray that they stay encouraged. You told us, dear God, to uh, encourage one another. And you told us to encourage ourselves. Hallelujah. And Lord, I pray for the confrontation. I pray for the confrontation. Those that is coming out, pray for our bishop. Everyone that works with him, the first lady, everyone in God that participate in this confrontation. I ask you, Lord, to anoint them, dear God, with the Holy Ghost. Kind of anoint them with more. Bless us, dear God, today, that we will be a blessing, dear God, that we can enjoy ourselves, dear God, and take something home with us that will help us, dear God. I just thank you today. For the cheerers last night, dear God, they did such a good job of speakers, everyone that participated did a beautiful, beautiful job. I thank you for the training that they are still receiving. Just like you, we were trained down through the years. Our children are being trained today. I thank you for the leaders and we pray for the leaders. In Jesus' name. Stop the 
Oh, 
resurrection. Praise Him, leading us out. Amen. We come here with a praise. Yes, you do. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. If you came here empty-handed, you came the wrong way. You came with praise. A bucket of praise over here and a bucket of praise over there.
Or you can give to us through Givelify. Spell out the word California Valley Jurisdiction and then C-O-G-I-C. You can also come to the campus here in Powerhouse and leave your offering. You can, in fact, you can bless us for the whole week if you would like to tithe and give a blessing, praise God, to this congregation, you can do that. For those of you that just like to mail your offerings in, in address will be 105 East Meyer Street. Mail it to our finance secretary, Tate Hill, administrator Tate Hill. That's 105 East Meyer Street, Fresno, California, zip code 93706. So there are various ways that you can support and sow seeds into the ministry of the California Valley Jurisdiction. Will everyone stand at this time and you'll be in the direction of the ushers? I'm looking for my ushers to see which one is directing. Praise God. All right. All right. Brother Garland is going to lead us around. I see him and I see the state ushers. We are all right tonight, man. We are all right. We have good hands.
educator of the program, Pastor Charles Barefield, our jurisdictional secretary, and he's not here. We definitely are looking forward to many events during the next couple of days. Amen. One of the ones that I want to mention is the registration package are still available in the foyer. Amen. You can see District Missionary Martha Hudson or Pastor Hudson. Amen. You can see either one of those. And it is an outstanding, outstanding program. It is beautiful. Amen. What has been prepared, giving you information so that you can know what's going on during the convocation. And you are supporting the convocation at the same time. Also, amen, we are looking forward to, on Friday, we're looking forward to a special time, amen, for our men. You're going to have a convocation forum for the men from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. It is going to be breakfast with the bishop, amen. The location is the Denny's Restaurant at 141 North Abbey. Amen. All you have to do is just look that way, and you'll know where it is. Amen. Don't end up on the one on Kings Canyon or Shaw. Amen. You're going to have to take care of it yourself. Amen. But join in with our bishop, amen, and men on tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock from 10 to 12 p.m. Amen. And the... Yes. Amen. The breakfast is free. Amen. That's why I say you don't want to go to the wrong days. Amen. Make sure you have the one on Abby. Amen. Abby is spelled F-R-E-E. -E. Amen. That's all right. You get that at home. Or either tomorrow morning or breakfast time. Amen. We look forward to that time with our bishop and him sharing with us. Amen. And sharing with the executives, the officers, the superintendents, pastors, and the elders. Amen. At this time, we also are looking forward to our tomorrow evening, but we have someone that's going to have something to say about that. We're going to call, amen, our regional uh, chairperson, our northern region area chairperson, Mother Patricia Matthews, to come and have words regarding tomorrow. Amen. And along with that, then, sister program indicates it. She is also the one who is going to introduce our supervisor. Let's say amen as we receive missionary Matthews.
<laughs> yes, we do. When we have a summation that's going to sum it up on tomorrow, yes, 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 and you just really want to tune in and be there with us. And I'm also to let you know about on tomorrow night. You don't want to miss that service either. You don't want to miss the rest of this June convocation. Yeah, yeah. The Lord met us here on last night. Yes, he did. And you know what? All day long, I've been feeling the presence of the Holy Ghost. God is doing something. God is doing something. And whatever he's been ready to complete, I want to be a part of that on tomorrow
already done it uh, last night. Hallelujah. And I'm just so grateful for respect to our jurisdictional prelate, Bishop Samuel Doyle. God bless you, Bishop. To all of the administrative assistants, to senior administrative assistant, Dr. A.T. Bailey. God bless you. First assistant, Dr. Dwayne Ray McAllister. God bless you. And to the second administrative assistant, Superintendent Tate Hill. <clears throat> To the elders, the ministers, I don't want to leave out anybody to see me. Elders, ministers, my own husband, Dr. Perry, to Pastor Gwen, Amy Collins, I love you. To the moon and back, God bless you. To the regional chairpersons, Northern, uh, Mother Patricia Matthews, uh, Central, uh, Mother Valerie Boyd, and our Southern regional chairperson, Mother Charlene Thomas. Amen. To our superintendent wife this evening who's sitting here with me this evening. I'm honored. Amen. Uh, missionary Carla Hill. God bless you. Amen. And to all the saints of God, it's just an honor to be here because God is worthy. You know, they said, you dress it up. I said, this is the convocation. <laughs> Said, all we have to do is walk the 
ministry and to me as the mission. We want to also remember our regional chairpersons this evening, our regional chairperson that's here tonight, is regional chairperson Matthews. God bless you this evening and to chairperson missionary board and oral surgery. So she's not able to do much talking. Amen. You know how it is when they did in your mouth. Not very careful. You, you'll be chewing on your tongue. So, amen. So she's doing this little talking. It's possible to be on our chairperson, uh, Thomas, in the southern region. We want to honor our district missionaries over our district missionaries. Thank you. 
keepsake. What a keepsake. We uh, want to change our direction at this point. We want to remember tomorrow night and we will bless our supervisor. Amen. Amen. All the men that have already received your notification of what we ask them. This is the convocation. Amen. I know we just came out of the event, but this is the convocation. Amen. It's a time when we set aside before to bless the leaders. Is that right? Amen. And tomorrow night is the night we honor our supervisor. Trust that each one has made preparation to have laid aside to do these things. The women department already fired up, ready to give tonight, I think. But hold it till tomorrow. Yeah. And all of you out. Soon, uh, the listeners want you to be a part, a great part, of uh, the blessing our supervisor on tomorrow. Uh, the ways in which it can be done, I'm sure, will be listed on uh, the screen. Cash App, CBJ, uh, Giveify, and uh, Mail. Amen. It's the end of the mail. Be sure you designate Amen. Amen. who this offer is designated for. Amen. Amen. It's very important. It's very important because if it's not designated, they won't know where to it should go, who it should go to. Amen. So we want to do that with clarity that uh, uh, everyone will be blessed and receive the blessing and praise of the Lord tonight for a musician of the birds.
God bless you, what a joy, what a delight, what an honor it is to be with the saints. But brothers and my sisters, right before we go into the word of God, I want to take this opportunity, first of all, to honor your bishop. What a great man. Come on, let's appreciate 
friend, your jurisdictional bishop, the Honorable Bishop Samuel Dole. Come on, let's appreciate this great bishop, this great man of God. What a joy, amen, to be with the saint in his jurisdiction. God bless you, Bishop. We love you with the love of the Lord. And of course, we praise God for the first lady of the jurisdiction. Let's appreciate the first lady of this wonderful California Valley jurisdiction. God bless you, Mother. And to our supervisor, Supervisor Perry. God bless you. God bless you. We want to go straightway into the Word of God. We honor all of the precious men and the women, to the administrative assistants, to our district superintendents, to all of the pastors, to all of the elders, to all of the precious women of the Lord, to our district missionary. We honor you and we're so glad to be with you for the 52nd Annual Holy Convocation of the California Valley Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. Come on, let's praise God for that. 52 years of holy convocation for the California Valley Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. I am honored by this opportunity to speak to the precious people of the Lord. My brothers and my sisters, my sisters and my brothers, right before we go into the word of God, will you join me with a word of prayer? Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, first of all, we just want to say thank you. God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your amazing grace. Now, Lord, we ask that you will be with us now for a while as we go to this, thy holy word. Give us what to say, when to say, and how to say it, that this your people may be blessed. All of these things we ask and believe in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. Now, my brothers and my sisters, I'm over 50 years Church of God in Christ. And whether you're in California, in St. Louis, Missouri, in Colorado, when it comes to the convocation and the saints, it's a time for fellowship. And most importantly, it's a time for us to come together and let's just praise the Lord. So before we go into the word of God, I want to make sure that I've got a unified church that I'm preaching to on today. I want to make sure that everybody under the sound of my voice is under, that you're under the same spirit of unity that I am. So let's test the water on today. Bishop Samuel, we're going to test the water in the following fashion. I need for everybody who loved the Lord to open up your mouth and for the next 30 seconds, clap your hands and let's just praise God. Come on, let's just praise him for his goodness. Praise him for his mercy. Praise him for his wonderful work towards the children of men. Come on, let's just praise him right now. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for another moment. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for waking me up this morning. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for putting me on the wake up list once again. Now come on, give your great big God. Hey, wonderful Jesus. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, glory, hallelujah. God bless you, God bless you. The word of the Lord, the word of the Lord as recorded in the book of Joshua. As recorded in the book of Joshua, chapter number one, and we're going to read verses one through three. Those of you who have your Bible, whether it's the paper edition, the iPad, the iPhone, whatever it might be, turn to the book of Joshua, chapter number one, and let us start reading. The word of God read as thus. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Well, what did God say? The Lord said unto Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, 
Look at somebody and say, now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, and unto the land which I do give unto thee, even, even to the children of Israel. Verse number three, verse number three. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. As I was with Moses, as saith the Lord. Now drop down to verse number five and let's pick up our reading again. Therefore shall not any man be able to stand thee before all the days of thy life. Once again, God says, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with thee. I will not fail thee. Oh, that just sounds good. Let me say it again. I will not fail thee, nor, hallelujah, nor will I forsake thee. Be strong and of good carriage, for unto this people shall thou divide an inheritance in the land. My brothers and sisters, my sisters and brothers, I want to speak to you from the theme that you're using during this 52nd Holy Convocation. Look at your neighbor and say, Dear friend, leading and succeeding through changing times. Oh, let me say that again. Leading and succeeding through challenging time, through changing time, through difficult times, leading and succeeding in the good days, leading and succeeding in the bad days, leading and being successful when you can't see your way, when you don't know your way. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Now, my brothers and sisters, my sisters and brothers, let me start this sermon off with an apology. That's right, that's right. I I'm going to apologize because I'll tell you right now uh, that I am not going to finish this text. Bishop, Bishop Dole, something happened to me in ministry a few years ago. It seemed like when I sit down to write a half-hour sermon, it somehow turns into a 40-minute text, a 60-minute text, and today, if I talk about everything that God has given me, we will be here for at least the next 24 hours. Oh, somebody just said he'll be there all by himself. But that's all right. God is with me. So as I said, my, as I said, my apology is simply this. I will not finish the text, but please allow me to introduce this passage of Scripture and we'll go as long as as God will give me to go. The theme today is leading and succeeding through changing times. My brothers and sisters, please allow me to pour just two points out of this theme on today. The, the first point that I want to pour or grab or take out of this theme, which is leading and succeeding through challenging times. The first point I want to make, I want everyone to understand that the God that we serve is a God of success. Oh, let me say that again. The God that we serve is a God of success. The second point that I want to talk to you about from the theme is that, the, it, that we are living in changing, challenging, difficult times. We are living in changing times. But please allow me to spend a few minutes on the fact that we serve a God of success. There is no failure in our God. My God is a God of victory. My God is a God of more than enough. My God is a God that can do anything but fail. Just look at somebody and say, God is a God of success. God is a God of victory. And my brothers and sisters, as long as you trust and keep your hand in the God of the universe, 
Look at somebody and say, you're going to make it. Look at somebody and say, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Philippians 4 and 13, Paul reminds us that we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us because our God is a God of victory. Our God is a God that can do anything but fail. Yes, he is. Success and God goes together. You remember the situation where Joseph found himself in Egypt. Joseph found himself in prison. But even in prison, even in, even in a jail, the Bible says that Joseph was prosperous and he was successful. Somebody is saying Bishop Smith, Reverend Smith, Dr. Smith, how can you be successful in the jail. Well, I'm here to tell you that God made a way for Joseph even in a jailhouse. God made a way for Joseph even when the odds were against him. You've got to know that you know that you know that there is no failure in God. The Bible let us know in Psalm number one, bless it's the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But, look at somebody and say, but, 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 his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in this he does meditate day and night because he believes God, because he trusts God, because he put his confidence in God. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. And here's a part that I love, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I'm here to tell you that we serve a God of victory. We serve a God of success. And as long as you keep your hand in his hand, he's going to make a way out of no way. Somebody under the sound of my voice is saying, Pastor Smith, you just don't know what I'm going through. Well, I've got something for your predicament. First, second Corinthians, second Corinthians, chapter four, chapter four. Verses 8 through 10 says, But we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. How can you be troubled and not be in despair? Listen, I just came to tell you that as long as you put your trust in the God of the universe, God is going to make a way out of no way. Somebody is saying, Pastor Smith, only if you knew what I've been going through, you wouldn't be preaching about success. Only if you knew what I've been going through, you would have an altogether different text. But I'm here to tell you that as long as God is with you, you're going to make it. As long as Jesus is with you, you're going to be more than a conqueror. As long as you have the power of the Holy Ghost, look at somebody and say, I'm going to make it because God is on my side. And if you believe it, take about 30 seconds and give your great big God a great big praise. Come on and praise him right now. Hallelujah. Well, the second point that I want to make from this thing is that yes, we are living in changing times. Yes, we are living in difficult times. But I just came to tell you that even though we're living in changing times, the Bible let us know that God is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Yes, we're living in a time that we've never seen before. We have trouble on the left, trouble on the right, 
we're still fighting our way through a pandemic, somebody, under the sound of my voice, you find yourself in the midst of swift transition. You've got trouble in the home, trouble on the job. But listen, I just came to tell somebody, just because you have trouble, don't be troubled. I understand how trouble operates. You don't have to trouble trouble to have trouble trouble you. Oh, let me say that one again. You don't have to trouble trouble to have trouble trouble you. But as long, as long, as long as you get Jesus on your side, trouble don't last always. The Bible says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. I'm here to tell you that as long as you keep your hand in the hand of the God of the universe, you can make it. I'm here to tell you, he said he'll never leave you, nor will he forsake you. Somebody, under the sound of my voice, you find yourself in trouble right now. I need for you to do something by faith. Just open up your mouth and praise him right now. Open up your mouth and glorify him right now. Because when praises go up, blessings come down. When praises go up, doors are open. When praises go up, bodies are healed. When praises go up, the devil's got to back up off you. Come on, give your great big God a hallelujah. Anyhow, praise. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Anyhow, never, never let your trouble get you down. When your trouble come your way, Lift your hands, lift your hands to God and say, come on, praise him right now. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and praise him right now. Oh, bless his wonderful name. My brothers and sisters, in our text on today, we have a situation where Joshua finds himself in a changing troubling situation. You remember Joshua. Joshua is no stranger to us. You remember Joshua. We meet Joshua when he was Moses' servant. Joshua is best known as Moses' second in command who takes over the leading of the children of Israel into the promised land. The Bible let us know that after the death of Moses, Almighty God anoints and appoints Joshua as the new leader. The Bible, the scripture let us know that, Mo that Joshua is in charge of leading the children of Israel to conquer the promised land. Somewhere around seven years, we find Joshua in battle to help the children of Israel to take that which God had given them. You remember Joshua. Joshua was there at the battle with the Amalekites. You remember the battle of the Amalekites when Moses was there and his arms were getting tired. And there were two, one on the right side and one on the left hand. And as long as they held up the arms of Moses, the children of Israel, led by Joshua, were successful in the battle. Well, it was Joshua that was in the battle. He was leading the children of Israel against the Amalekites. Somebody under the sound of my voice, you find yourself in the midst of a battle. But I just came to tell you that as long as God is on your side, Almighty God will give you the victory. Joshua was in the battle fighting while they were holding the hands of Moses. You remember Joshua. It was Joshua 
and Caleb, along with the other 10 that went to spy out the promised land. You remember Joshua. Joshua was, was, was the one along with Caleb who brought back the good report. The 10 said, we be not able to take the promised land. But Joshua and Caleb said, as long as God is with me, as long as Jesus is with me, as long as the power of the Holy Ghost, yes, there be giants. But I'm here to tell you that somebody, under the sound of my voice, I know you have a giant of a situation going on in your life. You have an obstacle that the devil has told you that this one is too big for you. Your giant might be an affliction in your body. Your giant may be the fact that your son or your daughter are hooked on crack cocaine. Your giant may be a situation where you're facing financial uncertainty. You may be facing the giant of bankruptcy. You may be facing the giant of depression. You may be facing the giant of distress. But I, 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 I just came by to tell you that the God of the universe is not afraid of the giant. You have to understand and you have to appreciate that the giant represented the spirit of the devil. After all, the Bible says that the devil comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I'm so happy that Jesus says, I come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly as long as you keep your eyes on Jesus. You'll be just like Joshua and Caleb. Yes, there are giants over there. Yes, we have some obstacles. But if the Lord be with us, they brought back the report that Moses is a good land. They brought back the report, Moses, we can do it. And if you believe like Joshua did, look at somebody and say, the giant has got to get out my way. Trouble has got to get out of my way. The devil has got to back off my son. The devil has got to back off my daughter. And if you believe it, come on, give your great big God a great big praise. Come on, put those hands together and open up your mouth and praise him for the victory. Hallelujah. You remember Joshua at Jericho? The Jericho experience. It was this same Joshua. And they, the Bible says that the city of Jericho was straightly shut up. In other words, they thought that because they had closed the gates, they thought that because they had closed everything off, that that would be enough to stop Brother Joshua. But I just came to tell somebody, just like at the Battle of Jericho, these walls must come down. Walls of depression must come down. Walls of lack must come down. Walls of confusion must come down. Walls of discouragement must come down. Walls of defeat must come down. Walls of I can't do it must come down. But it was Joshua that said that I know that God did not bring me this far to leave me. And you've got to know whether it's giants, whether it's walls, whether it's Jericho, whether it's the Jordan River, the God that I serve is able 
to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or we can think. If you know that you know that you know that the Lord will make a way just like he did for Joshua with the Amalekites, you know that God will make a way just like when it came to the giant. You know that the Lord will make a way even at Jericho. Why don't you stand on your feet, open up your mouth, and for the next 30 seconds, praise him for the victory. Come on and praise him now. I'm about to make myself up. I'm about to get happy myself on the word of God. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Leading and succeeding, doing changing, difficult, trying, complex time. Listen, I know that I have some pastors under the sound of my voice and you're in a situation where the members have not returned to the church i'm talking to a pastor right now you find yourself struggling because the ties the offering and the bills don't match or you'll get it on the way home but the tithing the billing I'm talking about the expenses are not on the same page. I'm talking to a mother who does not understand why your son and your daughter is flipping and you find yourself in the midst of changing time. It's right here in the text. It's right here in the text. For when we look at our text on today, if there was ever anyone who found himself, found herself in the midst of a changing, uncertain time, it's Joshua. For when we look at Joshua chapter 1, the Bible tells us about the change that has taken place in the text. Walk with me through Joshua. And we find that the Bible says, now after the death of Moses, that's the change right now. Henceforth, the children of Israel have been led by that giant of a spiritual leader by the name of Moses. Henceforth, to this point, when there was an issue, the children of Israel, including Joshua, they just went to Moses and says, Moses, how are we going to find bread in the, middle, in the middle of the wilderness? Moses would pray and God would make a way. The children of Israel would get thirsty and they go to Moses and said, Moses, we don't have any Kool-Aid. Moses, we don't have any orange juice. Moses, we don't have any water. And Moses would go to God. And somehow, the water would come. They would come to Moses, the leader, and said, Moses, we need to get some brand new shoes. We've been wearing these same shoes. And Moses would go to God, and God would somehow extend the life of those shoes so that they would not wear out. Now, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, there's a change in the nation. There's a change in the leadership. There's a situation that the children of Israel had not experienced before. It's in verse number one, for the text says, now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord. The change in the text, Moses is gone, y'all. Moses had transitioned now. And the children of Israel find themselves in the midst of an uncertain situation. 
They're talking, I can imagine, amongst themselves. What are we going to do? How we're going to get out of it? Who's going to intercede on our behalf for God? Just like you on today. You find yourself at a crossroad. Mama may not be there. Papa may not be there. Change has taken place. And you're saying, Lord, how do I go through this uncertain period of time? The first thing you've got to understand is that God said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. So in time of uncertainty, you just got to learn to trust in the Lord like never before. And that's why when I find myself in chapter 1, verse 1, when I don't know my way, I can't see my way. But I know that I know that the Lord will make a way somehow. Well, there's a change in leadership. The Bible says Moses has gone off the scene. Moses is no longer there. But one of the things I love about God is that God comes right in and look at what he says. Now after Moses is gone, it came to pass that the Lord, look at, look at, look at, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' leader, Moses' minister. Well, what shall we do, God? What's going to happen, God? God talks and says, Moses, my servant, is dead. But one of the things I love about God, he comes to Joshua. He doesn't come to Joshua and I'm about to get in trouble in the text. I'm about to get in trouble in the text. God comes to Joshua. He doesn't pat Joshua on his head. He comes to Joshua. He doesn't say, Joshua, Here's a handkerchief so that you can cry yourself a river. He comes to Joshua. He doesn't say, Joshua, go ahead, be sad, be down, be out. But look at what God says. God says, now therefore, Joshua, arise. In other words, he tells Joshua to get up. I want to let you know right now, if you're going to be used of God, if you're going to be mighty in the Lord, you've got to learn how to pull yourself together, stick your chest out, hold your head up. Everything may not be perfect. You may not have all of the money that you have, but get up by faith. Get up with the anointing. Get up with the power of God. Get up out of the pity party and look at what God says. He says, Moses, Moses is gone. But look, Joshua, get up and go over this Jordan River. In other words, God tells Joshua, God tells Joshua, I've got a plan for you. God tells Joshua, I've got a purpose for you. God tells Joshua, I knew that Moses was gone. God tells Joshua, I knew that an uh, uncertain time was coming. God tells Joshua that I knew that the situation was coming. But then he goes on to tell Joshua to get up. Somebody under the sound of my voice, you've been down too long. You've been out too long. You've been sad too long. You've been disappointed too long. You've been defeated too long. And God just sent me here to tell you that it's your season for grace. It's your season to be blessed. It's your season for favor. It's your season for success. It's your season for victory. It's your season for joy. It's your season for happiness. It's your season for peace. It's your season to go over this Jordan River. It's your season 
to get out of this mess. It's your season to walk in your anointing. It's your season to go into the promised land. It's your season to defeat the devil. It's your season to make it to the next level. But you got to know that you know that no weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. You got to know that you know that he did not bring me this far to leave me. You got to know that you know that you're not by yourself. If you believe it, come on and praise him now. Come on and praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. You've got to know it's my season to be blessed. It's my season to go to the next level. Leading and succeeding during uncertain times. I want to pray. I want to pray. My friend, just like Joshua found himself in the midst of an uncertain time and was standing where, wherever you are. If you're viewing this in the sanctuary, we're standing. If you're in your home, we're standing because God is not a God of failure. The Bible let us know that we can do all things through Christ which strengthen us. I want to pray. I want to pray. I want to pray. Somebody say, it's my season for favor. It's my season for victory. It's my season for prosperity. Leading and succeeding during uncertain times. Paul and Silas found themselves, I'm in the book of Acts, were standing all over. Somebody say Jesus. Or oh, I dare you to say Lord Jesus. Come on, come on, say Jesus. Just start calling on the name of the Lord. Paul and Silas found themselves in prison. And at midnight, you see, that story could have gone a whole different way. Somebody say Jesus. But at midnight, the Bible said one prayed and the other one sang praises. And the power of the Holy Ghost showed up. I want to recreate that anointing right now. When I count to three, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's gonna be all right. Come on, come on, come on. You're gonna make it. Come on, come on, come on. I know you've been going through some ups and through some downs, but God is here. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, God. On the count of three, I want you to open up your mouth wherever you are, and I want you to praise God and don't stop over the high seat and over the high seat and heart. And I don't want you to stop praising Him until I finish my prayer. We're going to do like Paul and Silas did and watch and see the power of the Holy Ghost is going to show up. Your victory is going to show up. Your anointing is going to show up. Your success is going to show up. Your healing is going to show up. Your, hallelujah, your miracle is in the room. Get ready. One, you better open up your mouth and praise him with your hallelujah. Praise him with your thank you, Jesus. One, come on, come on, come on. It's going to be all right. Two. Three. Come on, open up your mouth and praise him. Come on, and praise him. Come on, don't stop. Don't stop. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Joseph, the God that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Lord, hear me over the Hasidah heart. Over the Hasidah heart. Over the Hasidah. Lord, here we are. Lord, we are your people. And the sheep.
feet of your passion. Lord, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. Lord, you know the situation. You know the battles that we fight. It's cancer, Lord. It's cancer, Lord. It's the coronavirus, Lord. It's financial situation. It's my son, Lord. For, Lord, it is written in your word. Lord, you told me to ask, and I shall receive. Lord, you told me to seek, and I shall find. Lord, you told me to knock, and it shall be open. Come on, you better praise him. You better praise him. Lord, I come asking by faith. I come knocking by faith. I come seeking by faith. Lord, do it even now. Turn it around, Lord. Open the door, Lord. Make a way, Lord. And Lord, open a hot seat in heart. Thank you, God. Thank you for making a way, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for turning it around. All of these things we ask and believe in Jesus' name. Come on, in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen and amen. God bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord. Somebody may want to sow 10 minutes. Come on, 
God was a, amen, as a seed. Amen. As a seed, I want to remember, remind the members that we asking you to remember your pastor with the $2,100. Amen. amen. And we will acknowledge, uh, we won't call the name, just acknowledge, amen, tomorrow night. And maybe someone that wants to do that. If not, we will give it back in the hands of the superintendent, but amen, this is an opportunity. Amen. You don't have to miss. I can do all things through Christ. Yeah. It strengthens me. Praise the Lord at this time. If they are none, Father, we bless your name for the word of God to us. Bless the man of God and the people of God.